going to record. So Joshua has been uh, courageous enough to share a challenge that he's faced as he approaches uh, the final part of the module two solution. And the idea is to gain access to your router and then, and then go ahead and ensure that the latest firmware version is installed. There are times when an internet service provider will lock down a router so that the average customer can't get at it. But that's not typically the case. What, what happens is that it takes a little bit of homework and then a little bit of intestinal fortitude. That means you got to have a little courage because what you can do is reset your router. Now, some routers, some via provided routers will not reset or change or actually restart properly. So if you power them off and you power them on, you think that you're actually accomplishing a reset and you aren't because there's a battery. There's a panel on the bottom of the unit and there's a battery down inside there that maintains the memory of this thing so that you can't reset it. But what I did here, Joshua, is I just searched for Hytron CG NVM dash 2559. And then there were a whole series of other options like default password, factory reset, downloads, and so on, right? And I wanted a factory reset. So here's something from a popular website called Router Check. It would be better if we had some kind of link from the actual Hytron. Sometimes you get really good detail from a YouTube video. I know you've probably checked these things, right? You said you've exhausted, yeah. you've exhausted all of your, you have exhausted most of your uh, options and nothing's working. But I want you to notice too, that there's a lot of bogus information out there. And one of the tricks is to find a legitimate website from the manufacturer itself. So here you see hytrontech.com. And then you see Hytron Americas. We're going to get back to these. We're going to check the information here. But what I'd like to do is just check this button. And it says, press and hold the reset button, right? So there should be a tiny reset button. This is usually located at the back of the router. While the router is on, push and hold the reset button. Now, you usually use a paper clip to do this. And here's what happens when you start doing this, Josh, it may take 30 seconds before the lights start to flash on it. But after that's reset and you leave it alone for a time, the next thing to do is to power off the router for a few seconds. And here's the catch. If you power off the router, but it has one of those batteries in the bottom, it's not really clearing out, right? The old settings are still hanging on in there. So why do service providers do that kind of thing? Well, when there's a lot of power resets, when there's a lot of support interests and they only have a limited staff to support customers, they try to hardwire things, right? Now, the fun part is, and this is where it gets a little sticky. I'm gonna ask you, Josh, do you have other means of getting to the internet like you have a smartphone and you have 4G cellular, so you know you can get on the internet, or or you can still use your phone if your router goes out, right? Yes, I have I have mobile data on uh, my phone. Okay, so you could send me a text message, or you could rejoin the session with your phone, and then you could say, "Hey, now what do I do? This stupid thing isn't working, right?" Mm -hmm. In which case, I'd say, "Okay." join the session and then turn on your video camera on your smartphone. Let's walk over and have a look at it, right? Mm -hmm. And I could walk you through it. Now I happen to be on island today and I don't know where you live on island, whether you live close to the UVI campus or not. But in rare cases, I have actually made house calls, right? I have actually gone to a student home because, well, they call the service provider and the service provider says, yeah, we'll get to you next week. 
And uh, that's not a good answer, right? What do you tell your family members? Yeah, uh, wait a minute. You're taking a network course at UVI and now we got to wait until next week before we have a Wi-Fi. Thanks a lot, right? That doesn't really go over very big. The odds of this kind of thing happening and persisting are pretty slim unless your router has sustained some damage along the way. What am I saying? A reset with factory defaults is actually a pretty painless and pretty routine thing. Service tech support service staff do this all the time. When something isn't behaving, they pull the battery out of the bottom of the router, then they do the tiny little reset button. It's usually recessed. So I'm gonna go back to our reference here and I'm gonna pull up this. In fact, the YouTube video might actually show, you know, where you can go. Let's see if they show, I'm gonna look here in the manual first and then we'll see if there's something in the YouTube video. But every year we go through the same thing and it, it, it does, does this look like your router, Josh? Yes, that's, that's how it looks. That's how it looks, okay. Yeah, it's like a monolith, right? Oh, and this thing is, this thing is really robust. It shows that you can do all this cool stuff with it, yeah? 32 SSIDs, what does that mean? You can set up 32 separate Wi-Fi connectivities, you know, Wi-Fi uh, profiles. So at home, you might have like a guest profile and a regular profile and a 2.4 gigahertz profile. The fact that you can do 32 of those is pretty nuts. Uh, do, you, do you use your telephone using a jack out of that router? No, I don't. You don't have a home telephone that comes out of the back of that box and it's like a telephone cord and then here's your phone? No. Okay. All right, very good. Because they have a thing called voice over IP. Have you heard of this before? No, I haven't. Okay. So it used to be that you had these slender little wires that would come into your house called a POTS line, plain old telephone system, four thin copper wires, okay? And it would connect straight to your handset. And your handset, your telephone was called a handset and it was mounted on the wall. Or sometimes it was a tabletop, but basically it was connected to the wall with a wire and you could not walk around with it. Anybody ever seen one of those things? Yes. Okay. Now, a long time ago, they figured out that, hey, if we have great data networking, we can carry the dial tone for a POTS line on top of the data network, the digital network. That uses a, a protocol called session initiation protocol. So it, what it does is it opens up like a telephone console over your data line. And if you've heard dial tone, like when you're talking to somebody and you start dialing and you hear the little tones and do, 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 do. that dial tone is actually active on top of the data network once the session is initiated, hence the term session initiation protocol, okay? Now, another flavor, an older legacy flavor of that is MGCP, and there's certain telephone companies, but what you can do is you can actually plug a telephone into that and it'll to the old timey dial tone thing after that. Now, what do we want to do to make sure you don't run screaming from your room and you get in the car and you drive over the campus with a baseball bat because you don't want your family to, I don't know, burn you with the stake because Professor Kentop told you to do this and now it doesn't work. Um, on the back, is it gonna show me a picture? No, it's just showing me all this stuff. Um, Hey, hey, everybody see this? Remember I said people have trouble restarting things or resetting things because of a battery backup? Yeah, so you just wanna keep that in mind, Joshua. You may have to look at the bottom of the thing and then see if there's a panel where you can remove a battery. Now, yeah, it's okay. there is on the bottom of it. Huh? 
There is on the bottom of it, yes. Okay. Now, if after looking at this and hearing these things, you're like, yeah, I'm good. I'm not going to do this. Um, one thing you can do, do you have a smartphone that has a hotspot feature? Um, no, I have, a, I have unlimited data, so I don't have that ability. You, you have unlimited data? but you cannot use your cellular data to create a hotspot with your phone. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else in your family have that? I'm home alone right now. Okay. Uh, Joshua? Hello. Yeah. You want me to sign into my phone now or? Well, so one thing you can do, your phone has firmware, correct? Mm -hmm. So, and your phone can also be used, or if you have a phone that has a hotspot feature, you can show that your firmware on the phone is updated and submit that as an alternative for your solution. And uh, you can show some things on the screen when the hotspot feature is engaged. Some of those same screens that you see in a Wi-Fi router, you'll be able to access similar types of information like, okay, how many clients am I gonna support with my hotspot? And what are their IP address ranges? Is there network address translation? Is there a firewall? Stuff like that. You'll have a web-based, you'll have a web-based interface. So you turn on your smartphone hotspot then you take your laptop and connect to the Wi-Fi, find out what your IP address is, including the gateway, by typing in IP config and then forward slash slash all. And then that's the thing with is I, I can't like even access the hotspot because it tells me I don't have that kind of plan. Uh-huh. Okay. That's the problem. Okay. Um do you have any friends or relatives that have a Wi-Fi router that's different than the one you have? Yes, I yeah, yeah, they do. And uh, do they owe you any favors or do they think kindly of you? Well, the second part, yeah, but the first part, no. Okay. Um, you could say, hey, uh, would you let me do something for my networking class? And it'll mean that you'll have a smoother, faster, more secure network. And then you do it with their stuff. That's yeah, one I initially wanted to try it with theirs in the first place. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here's what I would recommend. Let's uh, let's go back and I want to watch this YouTube video because I want to see if they show the back and they show the little recessed pin. Do you have a paper clip? Yes, I do. Okay. So I'm going to turn this on and then we're going to watch it a little bit and then we'll do this. Okay. Oh boy. Such snazzy music. I'm sure you've seen this, right? Yeah. That's exactly what I tried and shit did not work. And that didn't work. Nope. Well, that's crazy. Uh, 
Um, this must be the part of the video where he hit the reset button and everything blacked out. It's funny, but it's not funny. Um, I'm really not sure why they don't, why there isn't uh, video playing. Um, I have a question about mind zone also. Yeah. Yeah, it would seem like when uh, the individual made this movie, they, right. So what you have, um, I don't want you to mess with the lithium battery yet, Josh, but what I do want you to do is I want you to, um, you're gonna press and hold that paper clip and into the recessed hole in the back of the, back of the, let me see if there's another way to search for this, right? Reset option. I'm going to look at images. See, see if there's an image. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's what we need. All right. So this picture is showing that the reset button, it's like a little round, empty hole just big enough to insert the end of a paper clip, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what you're gonna do is press and hold it. Now, when you press, you're gonna press firmly, but gently. You'll feel it go in, but then it'll stop again. And you're just gonna brace your hands around that unit and, and uh, just, just uh, breathe and relax and watch and wait. And then it, at some point, the lights on the front we'll all start going bonkers. It's like Christmas. They'll start flashing and all this stuff will start getting blinky and such, right? And what may happen is that uh, if you unplug your power and then you unplug and reconnect your, your lines and then plug your power back in, uh, you should be able to get back on your internet and you should you may have the ability to get in there and reset your uh, modem but if that doesn't happen and and the panels on the bottom you could try this one more time right by removing the battery on the bottom after the panel then while it's still plugged in and running because the battery is a backup right so if it's not connected it's going to say hey you don't have a battery backup or whatever but it's still going to keep running you can press and hold the reset button and then you may be able to get in there and uh, get on there. Now, if this is designed so that basically uh, consumers can't get into it, then again, your fallback option is to go to a friend's house or family member's house. Um, so, and you have a round cable that's plugged in there, right? You have a round coax cable. Yes, I do. And to be honest with you, I, I'm really scared to do this. So I don't think I want to do it with my Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay. It's a lot of steps and I don't want to really mess anything up. Okay. So. Well, I'll tell you what usually happens is it's just one step. You insert the paper clip, press and hold it for 30 seconds. Everything starts going blonk, blinky, blonky, whatever, right? You let off on the paper clip. You leave it alone for two minutes. You try to connect. If you can't, you unplug it. Wait 30 seconds and plug it in again. And that's it. All right? So that's not going to like stop my connect. It's not going to stop my Wi-Fi from signing back up and then um, reconnecting everything, right? It shouldn't. No. Okay. But, but here's the thing. If it does, if it does, mm -hmm then you could have had a, a messed up system, lightning storm, power surge, your, your, your device could be broken. And all this is doing is bringing that up to the forefront, which is why you can tag a guy like me in there and we can assess further. Or you call it via and say, hey, I got, a, I got a brick for a modem. I got a brick for a router. And they, they uh, they replace it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, 
Again, if you'd rather not do that, you're welcome to take an extra day or two, identify a friend or family member that has a different router, and then do it with them. Okay. But, Thank you. but in the 20 years I've done this with students, they've discovered one of two things. This isn't as bad as you think most of the time. The few times it is bad, they had a barfed piece of equipment and they fixed it. And then their Wi-Fi was a whole lot better because, well, they figured out by this process that there was something wrong with it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have known. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those cases where if you don't do anything, it's going to bite you sooner or later if something's wrong with it. Correct. And that's why I talk with my father over with it because I don't want to mess anything I, up. And I, I completely understand. Now, if you were close enough to campus, you came to the CAB building, we went to your house and I talked to your father and we walked through it together. Mm -hmm. You know, that's usually a game changer too. And I'm willing to do that because one of the things that we got to get out of our networking class is this ability to roll up our sleeves and get hands on. But that I'll leave that to you. And, and I won't be offended at all if you say pass or even hard pass. You'll get somebody that says, oh, I have an old Wi-Fi router and it's pretty slow. And if you can improve it, I'd be all for it. And, and that's where you get that's where you get the real, you know, that's where you get the real benefit. So I, I do understand. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just in between. <laughs> are we sharing our screen? I don't know if we're sharing our screen. Yeah, I can see. You can see. Okay. All right. Um, I think Tamira had a question. Um, no, I had a question. Uh, who are we talking to? Michaela. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I got my classes mixed up or my names mixed up. Okay. Uh, what's your question? When I put in the gateway address online, it's different from when I put in the IP configuration, like the information that I get is different when I put it why don't, in the- Why don't we share a screen? Yeah. Let's share a screen. Yeah. And yes, that happens sometimes, depending on the router, you can get all these weird things happening with a security component known as a certificate. Can you share your screen? One second. Oh, it's, it's not allowing me to share my screen for some reason. Um, I don't want you to share your screen. I have a Mac. I'm using my MacBook right now. Oh, you have you have a Mac. Okay. Um, sometimes well, you gotta allow Zoom to do things in your security settings. Are you using Safari or Chrome? I use Safari because it was saying, well, Chrome was saying that it's unprotected. So. Chrome was saying it's what? Like the internet, it, when I was using it, it's not protected, I guess. Oh, but you want that. I want you to share your screen and show me the Chrome screen and I'll explain what that means. That's what I mean by, about the security certificate. Yeah, that's the thing we wanna see. And I'm very glad you brought this up because it only happens on some machines. All right, hold on. Well, this is kind of like a bonus. All right, while you're getting that up on the screen, um, I'm gonna grab a quick drink of water. Does anybody else care to share a screen yet? Let's give everybody else a Okay. There's still people. Yeah, open up your Chrome and let's see that thing about the security measure. I'll be right back in 60 seconds.
Okay. Um, quick, quick question, Professor. Turn the log in. Oh. All right. What did you? <coughs> I'm sorry. Who said what? Uh, I was gonna um, ask a question quickly. I was gonna say, um, for, I, I don't want to really stray away from what she was asking, but for the um, third solution and the website that you want us to use, which is the Who is Search, correct? Um, and network to, um, dash tools. Yeah. Um, when we automatically go on that site, right? It's good. That's our our address that's going to be there on the. Um, What's, what's the word? It's not coming to me right now. But in the, the bar, right? Yeah, the box. In, the, in the display box, in the dialog box, mm -hmm. your public IP address is going to show in that screen. And then as Automatically. You, yeah, and then as you scroll down, <coughs> you'll see who the network belongs to. But you Yeah, and then the, it's going to be like under organization? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's a good, good right. question. Glad you asked. Thank you. Um, Michaela, can you share your yeah. form? Yeah, I was just trying to log in on my HP laptop to do it because it wasn't allowing me to do it on the MacBook. Okay, well, that'll work. Would anyone else care to share a screen? I, I can share my screen, Dr. Gantel. Okay, go ahead. Whenever he's done, I can share my screen. Okay. Um, this is my current Netgear. I wanted you to, to see, I wanted to do my logs. Uh -huh. And yesterday, around the time when I was working on it, um, you see right there, DO, DOS attack. Uh-huh. Yeah. You should get a screenshot of that and, you know, hit your print screen key and then submit that with your solution for extra credit. Okay, I will. I I, I, I wanted to know if, if, if that would have been, if that was any, because it was bad. Like, it was like a, it was like a whole line of just straight DO, DOS attacks. Yeah. I mean, somebody's trying to knock on your door, and depending on what happens, you know, sometimes they get in. I mean, I've, I've changed my admin password from before because the mm -hmm. issue I was having, I think I told you yesterday, was um when I, I hard reset the router because it was acting funny, mm -hmm. and hard resetting the router changes the password. Yeah. Um, but if you, own, fact, if you don't yeah. own a computer and change it, it just goes blank. Right. Yeah. It'll, if you reset, it'll go back to the factory default. Is that the latest for firmware version? Yes. And in order to get this, it wouldn't, it wouldn't allow me to do update this firmware over the Wi-Fi. I had to literally plug it in straight to the router and download the firmware off the, um, the support website, like you told me. Mm -hmm. And I had the screenshots on the, um, in my solution, but I um I had to download it and then upload it upload it straight to the router from the Ethernet port, right? Or from a thumb drive. Sometimes they'll have a thumb drive too. Because yeah. it was version it was version three dash one dash one something. Right. So. In your other advanced options, when it comes to administrative access, you ought to be able to turn on HTTPS. Um, like under security, uh, access control. Well, I might have to do with Wi Fi. Uh, no, okay, all right, so this is pretty cool. So it'll show the devices that are connected and you can, you can basically control, this is a really, you can, you can get a screenshot of this and, and, and you can use this security feature to claim extra credit. So there's that additional credit section. You can, you can 
turn on access control and allow selected devices to be connected based on their MAC address, right? So this is all about the MAC address. And when you, when you check which ones you want to allow, like your Samsung, okay, you got a wireless TV, right? And mm -hmm. you have a, and you have a desktop. And so you select the things you know you want. If you turn this on, when other things are trying to connect, they won't be able to because they're not part of the accepted. So it's called a whitelist. The other way to work is to blacklist. So you can either identify certain MAC addresses and say, okay, these are good. I'm gonna allow these, these are the good guys. You can say, okay, <clears throat> I wanna block these. So you've identified malicious or suspicious devices. That would be blacklisting. And then you see the option here. You can say, okay, allow all devices or block all new devices. So you can accept specific ones and then block anything else that comes along, which is really pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Would you look at the setup option? Setup. Yeah. Okay, so that's internet access. And that, that has to do with, yeah, all right. So one thing you can do is you can, see where it says domain name server? Mm -hmm. You're going to learn how to create your own domain name server. And one thing that's really cool is after you have your own domain name server set up, you can change this and then you're not, you're not dependent on the internet service providers domain name server. That's another way of improving performance and security is that you decide, you know, and then that also helps you do troubleshooting too. Uh, your wireless setup, right? See where it says enable SSID broadcast? Yes. If you uncheck that box, Netgear 17 will disappear. No one will know it's there. But when you connect with your wireless, you can tell your wireless on clients when you're configuring your wireless, so you know, look for it and it's not there. <laughs> There's an option to connect to other. And, and you know that your wireless network is called Netgear 17. So you type in Netgear 17, and, and then you know the password, the, the shared key to get on there. But if you really want better wireless security, you can hide or obscure the name of your wireless network. That's called the SSID, right? And all you got to do is uncheck the box that says enable SSID broadcast. Now, you need a screenshot of this before you do that, because all of a sudden, everybody in your house is going to go, hey, I have a friend over here. Why can't we see our Wi-Fi? You're like, it's there. Well, well, what the hell was the name of it again? And, you know, you have to be able to tell them. So that's the downside of hiding your SSID. Uh, any other questions? Um, oh, the, the HTTP, where would I go for that? Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out. Let's go to advanced, or no, let's go to administration again. Uh, let's go to router status. Uh, can you scroll down a little bit? Well, I don't see it there. Uh, let's go to the set password. Mm, nope, that's not it. What about it? 
were we already in the advanced setup? Yeah, this is an advanced. Oh, wait, let me see. I don't think, um, no, we haven't reached in here. Yeah, let's go in there. So you can turn off different wireless radios. If you're having a bad time with, uh, if you're having a really bad time with um, a leaky microwave and such, you can turn off the 2.4 gigahertz and only connect five gigahertz devices if you want. Um, let's scroll down. <clears throat> oh yeah, so this is uh, Wi-Fi protection or protected security, I think, or something like that, WPS. You use a number pin code. It's when you're trying to connect things like TVs and you don't have uh, a keyboard to work with. I think it would be under your web services management, right in the middle of that list. There it is. Always use HTTPS to access the router. That's the one you want. When you check that box and you save, it might knock you off. And then what you have to do is put in HTTPS colon slash slash 192.168.1.1. And then, then you can reconnect. So this would be a great screenshot to capture. Okay. Uh, anyone else want to share a screen? I would like to share my screen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll share my um, I wanted to share the thing about what I was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. Sure. Go ahead. Um, hold on, I'm trying to do something. <coughs> oh, so you have an heiress. Okay, when I go to the IP address, it's different from when I put in the IP configuration and command. Okay. Uh, I'm glad you're sharing this screen. So the IP address, the IP address that you're sharing right now, this is pretty cool. So this is what I was talking about in class before. See where it says IP address and it shows 162.247.26.249? Yeah. All right, now what I want you to do is to open up a new tab. And then type in network-tools.com. Yeah, um, there it is. Yeah, hit that one. Scroll down. Stop. See where it's, what is that? 162.247.26.249. Now go back to your other screen. No, it was it was another. Yeah, I think it was that one. One six two two four seven two six two four nine. Is that the same one? Yeah. Right. So that's Good. this is the public IP address that your internet service provider uses to connect the WAN port or internet port on your wireless router to the internet. So in order for you to have internet in your house, you have to have a port on the internet. You have to have, you have to have a door out into the World Wide Web, right? So your internet service provider has to have public network addresses, one for each home router they service. And your public IP address is 162-147-26249. This is not what I would use for the solution. That's correct. Here's what you would use for your solution. Now, I mean, no, no, no. 
it, that number is part of your solution. It's in some of the sections. So you want the gateway address that you use to connect to this, which is 192.168.0.1. But you also want to capture this screenshot so that we can see what your public IP address is, right? And I think you're supposed to do both, aren't you? Yeah, it says you need the IP address, the submit mask, the DNS. Which part of the which part of the solution are we talking about? Uh, the, the first part. When it asks you to um, put in send a screenshot of your IP address, submit mask. Gateway. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna stop recording. Stand, hang on. 